of all the new sellers, less than 30% ever get a sale at all, either by not listing or not participating or they don't get sales, and less than 10% are still selling today. So although those initial numbers, almost a million people joining and starting Amazon businesses or opening Amazon accounts at the very least, are not with us anymore for whatever reason. This week, really want to talk about why everybody's quitting Amazon FBA. Have you ever thought of quitting? I certainly have many times, many, many times this week. Sometimes <laughs> I know that's not really encouraging information, but stay tuned because I want to talk to you about specifics reasons why people are walking away from Amazon and how you can capitalize on that because it's not as bad as it sounds. It's actually awesome. I mean, if your competition gets up and walks away from, from the game, you could double your business, right? So we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, the benefits, and the reasons why. And maybe you're on the fence about it. Maybe you're really struggling or you have struggled and you just wonder, why am I still doing this? Is there something else? Is there an easier way? Uh, so we definitely want to cover some of those things in this particular thing. But you know, guys, I love data. I love statistics. I love being able to give you this type of information so that you can make good informed choices for yourself. Because guess what? Sometimes this isn't right for you. Maybe it's not a right fit anymore. Maybe it's not the right thing that you're trying to do or, or you've been working at it for a while. But we're going to go through some of these. And if you kind of find yourself in this moment, you know, there's lots of things that you can do about it. So. 12 months, there's close to 950,000 new sellers joined Amazon between the pandemic, the what they call the great resignation, where everybody's walking away from their nine to five jobs and they've been downsized or COVID has sent them into a place where they might be able to work from home and people are discovering it. So 950,000 some odd sellers are joining Amazon. Um, it, it seems that there are 250,000 people are are joining Amazon every year consistently. That that number has grown up. 72% of new sellers never end never end up listing any products whatsoever. 72% of people that join Amazon never list a product for sale. 1,000 sellers keep selling for longer than three months, and only 38,000 keep selling for longer than six months. Sellers who joined Amazon nine to 12 months ago, only 13,000 of them are still active. Now this comes from marketplacepulse.com, so you can go look up the article there. Um, but this illustrates that as time goes by, sellers fall off. Out of all the new sellers, less than 30% ever get a sale at all, either by not listing or not participating or they don't get sales, and less than 10% are still selling today. So although those initial numbers, almost a million people joining and starting Amazon businesses or opening Amazon accounts at the very least, are not with us anymore for whatever reason. The lesson from this analysis is that while joining Amazon, joining Amazon, opening an account is fairly easy, turning it into a long-term sustainable business is not easy. And this is why I've done some research and looked into some different things of why people quit. There's tons of videos on Amazon or on YouTube and other places where people say why I quit Amazon or quitting Amazon or giving up or, you know, all these different things, um, which is fine. Everybody has their own journey and their own story and everyone's entitled to pivot and change and have their opinions. But there are several reasons I have deducted after watching some of these videos and watching why people walk away from Amazon is uh, a lot of these reasons. So we're going to go over some of them. Oh, by the way, if you want to join the Mommy Income Facebook group, the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income, you need a code word. And I know right lately I have been skipping code words and forgetting them, so I'm trying not to do that anymore. Your code word for this week is bye. Um, B-Y-E, bye. Of course, we'll probably accept B-U-Y if you're listening and didn't see the, the card here on YouTube. Uh, mommyincome.com slash join us and you can, you can enter your code word and your email and we will let you into our awesome Facebook group where you can ask a bunch of questions, G10 exemptions, brand registry, product research questions, just getting to know Amazon better. So let's dive in. Why do people quit Amazon? Number one, people quit Amazon because they don't understand the rules. 
So like they're worried, they're fear, they're they're concerned about getting suspended or flagged or warned or frustrated with all of the different rules. They don't understand the rules and policies and regulations that Amazon sets forth. And we don't have any control over this. So Amazon sets the rules, it's their playground, it's their business, and we have to follow those rules or they will not let us sell our product there. Now, good, fair, un unfair, or otherwise, it's the same type of thing. If you walk into a business, they have policies, rules, regulations, things like that. And if you don't abide by them or follow them, they can remove you. They can kick you out. If, you know, most restaurants, thank God, are non-smoking places. And if you lit up a cigarette in the middle of a non-smoking restaurant, they have the right to remove you. <laughs> Same type of thing with Amazon policies. If you are not following the rules, if you are trying to do things black hat, or there's the classic one. The classic one that I hear all the time is, well, other people are doing it. I see this all the time on Amazon. I see other people's listing. How come they can get away with that and I can't? Listen, this is age old, right? Like we roll our eyes because we probably all heard our parents say this. Well, if all of your friends were jumping off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? And of course, snarky kids like mine would be like, well, yeah, because it's probably on fire or something. And if everyone else is jumping, there's probably a good reason. <laughs> My kids are pretty smart. Anyway, the reality is just because you see it being done, just because other people are doing it, does not make it allowed. It does not make it... Uh, not against terms of service, just because people are practicing black hat strategies. So what are we learning from this? Learn the dang rules. Read, research, ask questions. The hard part about Amazon, and let's just be real and frank here, right? They don't adhere a lot of their own policies. They certainly don't always get rid of all the bad actors because they're a multi-billion dollar company. It's really hard to get everybody for all the policies. Plus, let's be real. We don't want them to be such rule Nazis that they come around and get all of us good people that are doing good things and make honest mistakes. So a lot of the rules are in place to prevent fraud, to prevent um, people being ripped off, you know, things like that. But innocent, honest mistakes happen all the time. And there's protocols and rules and regulations and things that you can do to prevent that, aka learn the rules. Um, if you're a wholesale bundle student, if you're a student of Start FBA Today, um, I have links to rules. There's links to rules on the internet, even if you don't have an Amazon account. So you can read some of the rules and po policies. And also remembering Amazon's not out to get you. OK, they have a business to run. They have money to make. They, they have a platform by which you can sell products, but they also have to have rules and regulations. They're not after you, but they're also not as great about policing their own rules, following their own rules and all that. But it's still your responsibility to know them. So if you got pulled over and the officer told you that you were speeding and wrote you a ticket, ignorance is not an excuse. It is your job to know the rules. It is your job to know the laws of the land. It's your job to know the speed limit. And just because you don't know what the speed limit is does not mean you're not accountable for breaking it if you do. So same thing applies to Amazon. It is your responsibility to understand the rules, regulations, understand that Amazon's not out to get you. They're just trying to regulate their platform. So know the rules and don't get kicked off and then blame Amazon for you know all this bad stuff. Yes, they do wrong things. Yes, they make mistakes. They do it all the time. But for the most part, it's not usually because you did nothing um, as far as breaking a rule or a policy violation of some sort. And they are getting better about this. La uh, 10 years ago, if you broke a policy, they blacklisted you. Like you were kicked off forever. No ace in suspension. So just suspending your account locks you up. You cannot open another one. You're literally like blacklisted. So at least now they do ASIN level suspensions. They might... Um, put your account on reserve or suspend it for a time until you can submit some proof and things like that. So they are doing their best to try to regulate the platform that you sell on, but it's your job and your responsibility to know the rules. So people are quitting because they get in trouble for rules that they didn't know about, but it's still not Amazon's fault. They didn't know the rules. It's their own. So there's that. Another thing that people really struggle with is they focus a lot of newer sellers or people that are in the what I call the research phase of the business where they're looking to see if this is a viable option. They might even start dipping their toes into the water of some education or looking for products to sell. And I hear this all the time. I can't find 
profitable products to sell. Or there's so many things that you can't do on Amazon. You can't sell this. You can't sell this. You can't sell that. You know, I'm restricted in all these categories. And you know what, you guys? Excuses aren't deposits. <laughs> Excuses cannot be deposited into your bank account. Um, but what can is focusing on what you can sell. So one of the one of the reasons why people quit is because they're always focused on all of the negative. They're very skeptical and they focus on the stuff that they can't do. We all know, right, that can't is a bad word in my house. It's a bad word. It's like foul language, bad word. Can't. Yes, you can. You might not want to. You might not know how. You might be scared, but you can. So can't is a bad word. Don't tell me you can't. Yes, you can't sell groceries when you first sign up to sell on Amazon. And rightfully so, because your ability to make mistakes in the beginning as a beginner are very high. And so you might make some mistakes and you don't want to make mistakes that could harm people or hurt them or make them sick or any sort of thing. So they restrict certain categories until you are more qualified to sell, which means following the rules, practices, getting getting some good um, metrics out there. But you also can get approved for that. It also costs an investment. So if you want to get ungated or sell in restricted categories, then you have to upfront some money to purchase wholesale products and show invoices to Amazon that you purchase from legitimate wholesale sources. Um, and they're protecting themselves and their customers. And that is a good thing. Um, so focusing on all the categories you can't sell in are is a reason why people walk away. Oh, it's too restricted. It's this and that. And meanwhile, the rest of us are making thousands, if not millions on Amazon because we're focusing on what we can do. So if you're just starting your Amazon account for the first time, there are tons of categories that you can sell in. And below this video, there's going to be links to Amazon. You know, you have to have a Seller Central account, I think, in order to view some of the these services and these links that we put there. Like, so have to have Seller Central. But it lists all the categories you can sell in, which is a ton. First of all, toys and games are restricted, I think, during Q4 and uh, but apparel, clothing, um, home goods is one of the hugest categories. Home and kitchen, completely open category. Lawn and patio, sporting goods, you know, so many categories you can sell it in. Books, uh, media, media to a certain extent, I think below $25 or something like that. I don't know. So don't focus on what you can't do. You're, you're shooting yourself in the foot before you even start if you're focusing on all the things that you can't sell on Amazon. Another way and reason why people quit. Oh, because, oh yeah, this was kind of part, it wasn't part of the first one, but it's part of this third one, is you can't find profitable products to sell or profitable inventory to sell. Oh boy. Y'all know I love you, right? Okay, this is like my mommy voice. I'm going to talk in my mommy voice to you for just a second. And it's not to be little. It's just because I'm a mom and I can't help it. This is my like tough love. If you can't find profitable inventory to sell on Amazon, you haven't put the work in. You haven't put the work in. There's plenty of profitable products, especially bundles to sell on Amazon, but you've given up too quick. I don't care if you've had a hundred rejections for no, you're not allowed to sell our products on Amazon. For every hundred rejections, you can get at least one or two catalogs. And from that catalog, you can sell anything you want. And yes, I've heard this a million times. I've, you know, people try to manipulate me into giving away stuff, right? I mean, this happens all the time. You should see this inbox that I have, right? People are very tenacious and they have the audacity to say, well, if you think it's so easy to find profitable products to sell, then why don't you just give us a list? Um, because you need to earn it. I teach you how to find the vendors. It's your job to find the profitable products to sell. There are tools and software and research strategies, and most of them can be free. But you have to put the work in. You have to put the work in. No one is just going to hand you a million dollar business or a thousand dollar business. You actually have to work for it. Put in the work. Look for inventory that in uncommon places or in unique places. So back when I was doing retail arbitrage, I would look for random products in random stores. So look for toys at the hardware store. Look for um, trendy products in gas stations. You'd be surprised. They like right now, Squishmallows are like the thing. And you're starting to find them everywhere in places that you wouldn't normally see them. Like 
gas stations or truck stops or um, convenience stores, things like that. So look for a niche. Look for a niche. It doesn't have to be something that you're super into, although that really helps because you know what kind of products people are looking for. But look for a specific niche and start to study. You guys, if this was easy, every single person would sell on Amazon and make millions and we'd all live happily ever after the end. But the reality is it takes a little bit of work. I mean, did you expect that for all this to just fall in your lap and then you were just going to stroke a couple of keys on your computer and um, all of a sudden all the zeros are going to pop into your bank account? No, you've got to do the work. The other thing is stop chasing bolo lists and bolo deals. And for those of you who don't know, um, be on the lookout. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there. They sell lists, they give away lists. And y'all, I'm not anti-list. I'm just anti-laziness. I know some people just want to cut corners and it's fast and it's like easy and just give me a list and I'll go buy it. But that comes with its own set of problems. How many other people got that same list? They're going to the same stores, buying the same thing. And within a month, prices are going to tank. But if you know how to do the work, do the research, find it, validate it, bring it to the market, you have something that no one else has. It's called the entire buy box to yourself. It's called all the profits from all the sales instead of just trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get by because it's easier. No one ever got to the top because it was easy. Because they were willing to do what most people aren't willing to do. The work. So we're going to do the work. Stop following the crowd and do your own work. Yeah, it's good to have ideas, but you know what? You can walk into any trade show. You can go to any trade show website. You can download a catalog and you've got ideas. You just need a catalog or you just need something to look at. I don't go to Walmart, take a picture of a shelf and then go home and start researching the different products that are on that shelf and vendors. Um, all of this information is available. Use it. Do research and then do more research. And then make a decision to sell a product. Start doing wholesale. If you are running dry on retail arbitrage or you're just exhausted from going from store to store to store and following the same things and you're maybe in a rut or on a plateau, start doing wholesale. One account, one catalog, one product at a time. Just do some research. If you don't know how to research properly or you want to research for wholesale and wholesale bundles, mommyincome.com slash system. The wholesale bundle system teaches you the entire 12-step research process for you to bring bundles to the table. But guess what? It also works for retail arbitrage. It can work for wholesale products. It can work for private label products. It teaches you how to do the process so that you can then apply it anywhere else. So if you're worried about any of that stuff, your first place to start is doing some research, calculated, intentional, consistent research. That's how you bring products to the marketplace. Any product, whether it's wholesale, whether it's your private label, any anything, that's how you do it. Another major reason, and I am very careful about ever using someone's name or gurus or anything like that, or people that make videos about these things. Um, a lot of times there's been people saying that they, aren't, they weren't making any money on Amazon. And I will tell you this, if you're not making money on Amazon, you're doing it wrong. There are plenty of ways. Now, yes, Amazon takes a lot of fees and they charge you for things and there's storage and there's PPC if you're going to get involved in that and everything else. Yeah, there's fees because they provide you with the world's largest product platform. So you ought to pay them fees. They do a lot for you. They do advertising, they do customer service, they do returns, they do um, all the different things to make your products visible to the globe. You can't do that at your brick and mortar. So you are for a lot of services from Amazon with their fees, but not making money is not knowing your numbers. Your numbers track everything, everything you spend money on, everything. Everything from your Starbucks to your mileage to um, any piece of paper and pen and everything else. Track it all. Understand the fees from Amazon. That's number two. Understanding the fees from Amazon. Long-term and monthly storage fees, shipping fees, pick and pack fees. Oh, also knowing your numbers is also catching mistakes that Amazon makes because how many times do they make them? Daily, hourly, every minute. 
And they nine out of 10 times will refund your money. They'll look into it. If you tell them they owe you money for something because they charged you for something or the weight is off or things like that, those are things that can be corrected. And so many people lose money on transactions because they're simply not paying attention. Your numbers are the difference between a hobby and a business. A hobby is something that costs you money. A business is something that makes you money. So if you're not making money, all you do is that you have an expensive hobby. And I hope you love it because there are so many challenges with Amazon sometimes that that would not be a hobby I would want to do for free, period. So what are the actual costs of what you're selling? What it costs in time? Prep center fees, shipping fees, packing material, uh, all of the different nuances that run your business know your numbers because then you'll know whether or not you're making money. Also, you might not be making money because you're not consistent Money isn't made randomly. Money is made intentionally. Be consistent. If you don't source and ship regularly, how do you expect to get a payment? On stock. You can't stock what you haven't sourced, what you haven't purchased and sent in. And whether that's you or a prep center or a friend or a family or someone else you pay, whatever it is, ship it. Number five, reasons why people quit Amazon. They quit too soon. Quit too soon. Now, I have some things I have to say about this because this is kind of a double-edged sword as well. You have to give yourself time to learn and develop and build a business. That's what this is. Now, if you are in the beginning, all this stuff is hard because you know nothing, right? You don't know how the platform works. You don't know the how to write a listing or build a listing or even like submit something to be sold on Amazon or how to ship in a package or what is merchant fulfilled or the lingo alone. You have time to learn and develop and build a business. It doesn't happen overnight. You're not just going to sit down to a course and watch it one time and know all the things and be perfect at it. It's not happening wouldn't happen with this. It doesn't happen with anything else. If anyone ever tells you that it's fast and easy and no problem, they're not telling you the truth. And to take time to learn and practice and put these things into action in order to build a business. It's not like a pop-up tent that you just like pop up and here it is and we're ready to rock and roll. It takes foundational skills. It takes building a skill set that you don't have yet. So give yourself a break and give yourself time. Building a legitimate, sustainable business is going to take time. It's not a get rich quick income thing. If you're trying to make your rent this month, you don't need a business, you need a job. But if you've already have established yourself, you're making an income right now and you want to invest into a business that can eventually replace your income, then we got something to talk about. Know that there's a learning curve Every single time you get into something, there's always a learning curve. Sometimes it's steeper, sometimes it's smaller, depending on what skills you're bringing to the table. But here's an example. Maybe it's this, and some people are like, oh, maybe I'll just open my own brick and mortar store. Well, a brick and mortar store, you would have to spend your life savings on opening a brick and mortar. You'd have to quit. Would you quit after a few months? Would you not do the all you can to advertise, find customers, research, innovate new products, have promotions, um, run events before you moved on to the next thing? I mean, all it's the same type of style, only it's got a little bit more freedom in it because you're building something online that already has built in marketing for you. No one has to every Amazon is a household global name. Everybody knows what Amazon is, so you don't have to. Um, you know, you're not like you're introducing your brand to the entire world um, in the moment. You can say, oh, I saw on Amazon, you know, okay, great. That everybody knows what that is. So quitting too soon, not giving yourself time to learn and understand and then fully practice the business before you decide that it's for you or not for you. And I totally respect that. Sometimes when you put in the time and energy into something, you realize, I just really don't enjoy this that much, or I thought I was going to enjoy this, or I was just in it for the money, and now that it's really hard, I just want to give up and quit and move on to something else that's easier. Good luck with that. (laughs) It's easier to do things that you really enjoy. 
But ask somebody in the weeds, ask somebody who's in the thick of it, dealing with problems and issues, even if they're good problems and issues like grow, growing beyond your means and things like that. If they're not passionate, they don't really love what they're doing and it's just like trying to make money. Look, anybody, you can make money doing anything. There's so many jobs available out there right now. There's so many different things. So it's not just another job you're building. You're building a business and a legacy. So when you're doing that, you have to consider the pros and the cons and how long and how much it's going to take. Give yourself time. I would say 12 months. And when I say 12 months, I used to say six, but then I realized that that's just not enough time. You want to be able to go through all the seasons, including Q4, and get a feel for what the potential is. And then after a year of diligently and consistently practicing this business, if you feel like it's just not for you and you've struggled so much and you just don't enjoy it and you hate it, great. Pivot, change, do something you love and it fills you with energy and passion and motivation. But if you do it for a month and a half and you're like, oh, I just can't make money at this, can't find any products, whatever, you're just giving up. You're quitting because it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Most things are that are worth doing. So don't quit too soon. Oftentimes people are really close to a breakthrough or really close to really understanding and nail, hitting that nail on the head. And the people I see have the most success are the people that take the most consistent action, not big steps, not investing $10,000 of a life savings, but someone who spent a couple hundred dollars on a bundle after they took wholesale bundles class. Or they've invested in a workshop, they go home, they spend a couple hundred dollars in inventory, put their first bundle out there and sell out immediately. They did the work. Because they know too that excuses can't be taken to the bank. So don't quit too soon. Evaluate. And if you guys need help evaluating whether or not you should pivot and quit or continue with Amazon, I'm here to help you because guess what? I only want you doing something that you love, something that's within your wheelhouse and your skill set to do. Because maybe you've started your Amazon business and you're doing okay, but you're just, I don't know, just run out of passion for it. You're sick of it. You know what to do, but you're just like, oh, I'm not sure this is for me anymore. Let me help you discover what is for you. Because I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a business strategist. I'm not just an Amazon e-commerce specialist. I'm a business strategist. I can pretty much sell ice to an Eskimo, given the right circumstances. I can help you figure out what's next for you if Amazon's not the right thing. Mommyincome.com slash coaching. Figure it out. Let's have a strategy session. Let's figure out what is your next move that's going to be the best move for you. Now, this leads me to my next thing. It's kind of a double-edged sword here too as well. I know I keep saying that, but it really is. A lot of these things are, are multifaceted. So another thing, a reason why people quit Amazon is because they're in it just for money. They saw an opportunity. They were thinking that it was going to be like this big windfall. And, you know, I, I can just put in a couple hours of work and set it and forget it and make millions. Um, you've got to have a reason. Why did you sign up for this? Why did the opportunity or the business model attract you? What? The why will drive you when things get tough. And trust me. They're always going to get tough, whether it's this business or something else. There's always challenges. There's always obstacles. Things are going to get hard. Yep, I said it. I know that's not super motivational, right? But at least we're honest. About it. Yeah, it's going to get hard. But you know what? When you have a community and you have people and you have help and you know your reason why you keep pushing forward, it's not as hard as it seems. Realize that business, no matter what, is never going to be easy. There is work involved and you will not just be sitting on the beach in six months drinking some foo-foo drink and living it up. Not yet, at least. Got to put the work in. Everybody wants the result without the work. It like reminds me of the story of like the little red hen. Do you guys remember the little red hen? Do they even read that in schools or anything anymore? It's like the little red hen and wants to make baked bread and he runs around asking all of his friends and family to come help make the bread, make the bread. And everyone's like, yeah, I want to eat the bread. Yeah, that sounds great. But then when it comes to doing the work, nobody wants to do the work. But then when the bread is made, everyone's like, oh, let me get a slice. Let me have a piece of that. Let me... and, uh, nope. You didn't put in on this. <laughs> you didn't do the work. So you don't get the reward. 
Also remembering that if you're just in it for the money, money will not solve all your problems. Trust me, I know. You think when you're broke, which I've been in both places, remember? Foreclosure, 50,000 some odd dollars in debt, paycheck to paycheck, didn't know what was gonna happen next. No health insurance for three or four years. Like, I, I get it. I know exactly what it's like to be broke. But I remember thinking at that time, gosh, if only I had more money, this would be better. That would be better. This would be better. My husband and I wouldn't fight about money or how to spend it. And that would just go away. And, you know, the reality is that whether you have a lot or you have hardly any, problems are still problems. Most of the problems you have do not necessarily stem from money. If you have relationship problems, money might be something you argue about, but most it, there's something underlying there. Unmet needs, there's maybe some communication issues, maybe there's some fundamental uh, differences of beliefs and opinions. Things all can be solved with therapy and communication and help. But I know lots of people that make really, really good salaries and they're not happy people. Some of them are. But you think that money is going to solve your problem, that's going to make you happy? It certainly isn't going to make you skinnier or more likable or any other thing. Because money can't buy what's the most important in life. So if you're just in it for the money, at least do something you love. So if you're just in it for the money, you got to do something you love. Otherwise, you will quit because it's gonna become a point where you're gonna say, this isn't worth it. Y'all, I said that this week, to be honest. Uh, my joke is I always say, I'm gonna go work at Starbucks. Like, oh, that's it. I come out of my office after a rough day and tell my husband, I'm going to work at Starbucks. <laughs> He's like, yeah, right. Um, there's problems. Things are gonna be tough. But you know what? You're tough. You've been through hard things. We've all been through COVID. Some of us have lost people to COVID. Some of us have had it. Some of us have recovered from it. Some of us are still dealing with it. We've all lost a loved one or maybe a job or a pet or just something really important to us. We've all faced disappointments. Sometimes you can just be disappointed that a friend canceled a lunch date because you are really looking forward to that conversation. But when things get hard, money is not the motivator. Money is not going to keep you moving through the hard things because you feel like, forget it. It's not worth it. I'd rather sit and watch Netflix than, you know, deal with these Amazon Seller Central cases, right? Success comes at a cost. Sacrifice will be involved. And you should submit to these truths or leave now because that's what business is. Number seven, people walk away from Amazon because they maybe started with Merchant Fulfilled and didn't get the sales they were hoping for. Now, FBA is where it's at. Yes, it has its own sets of challenges, just like anything else, but Merchant Fulfilled, you're missing out on 75% of the customer base on Amazon that are looking for prime two-day shipping. That's one of the reasons people love about Amazon. Speed, convenience, variety. Um, things are delivered right away to them. They don't have to wait and deal with, you know, every time I order something from a merchant fulfilled seller and I have to return it, I just roll my eyes and get frustrated because I know that it's a different process to where if I need to return something from Amazon that I bought, I can use the app, I can press a couple buttons and send things back to Amazon. Merchant fulfilled is a little bit different because they have to approve it. And people know this and they tend to sort that. That's why there's a button on Amazon. Amazon that says sort by Amazon Prime. It won't even show me merchant fulfilled listings because I only want Prime. And there's lots, of, I wish I had a stat on that, but there's a lot of people that, that won't buy if it's not Prime. You it, Even though Amazon makes mistakes and they make mistakes with my inventory and they will with yours and it's not a foolproof system, but you've got to trust the FBA system. Now, what I will say is if you are selling products that are, I don't know, like expensive, like over a hundred bucks, over $200, you know, really expensive equipment, things that especially are small, like real jewelry, stuff like that. Then we have a different conversation about Merchant Fulfilled at that point, because um, there is some risk you can mitigate from that and some that you cannot. So I know people ex expect to have different hoops to jump through for things that are very, very expensive. 
So um, there's definitely a different strategy to approach if you sell things that are a couple hundred dollars or more and, you know, or, or heavy and bulky and things like that. So reach out to me. There's different strategies for that. But for, for the most part, doing Merchant Fulfilled because you're worried about letting go of control of your inventory is the biggest thing that will stunt your growth. You need to be using FBA. Um, and so if you're not using FBA, that's a step in the direction you need to do because you're like, oh, I tried Amazon, but I didn't get any sales. And well, are you using FBA? Because that's where most of the customers from Amazon come from. And you're missing out on all that clientele if you are not using FBA in some form. Number eight, eight and final reasons people quit. They underestimated the workload of an online business. They somehow got false information or they got on some rah-rah train about watching something that's like, ooh, great opportunity with big flashy numbers, whatever it is. And they didn't realize the workload that was going to go into it. But you got to know what you're getting into. This is a lot of work until you get the hang of it and maybe can hire some help. It is. I know it's not sexy to say that. I know that doesn't feel encouraging for me to be like, yeah, this is a lot of work. What's it worth to you? Do you hate your boss? Do you hate your job? Do you hate commuting? Do you feel forced to go to your jobs every day because it's the only option you have? Because that, my friend, is a lot more fuel to the fire than anything else. Because you don't have many options when it comes to these pain points. There's like three options, right? Like you can either A, be miserable now and deal with it now and decide that you're going to do something about it now. Or you can wait till later and be miserable until then. Or you can be miserable for the rest of your life and do nothing. So I'd rather take temporary pain, temporary misery for maybe double hustling. Maybe you're working a nine to five and then you come home and from six to 10 or six to 11, you do online business. That doesn't have to happen forever. If you're consistent, if you're diligent and you keep your why in front of your face at all times. Your reason needs to be so motivating that no one has to tell you to go sit down and do some research. You can't help it because you know that if you are consistent and you put the work in, that your result will come. Or you can sit around and make excuses and go, oh, this is so terrible and online business is so hard, but I hate my job, but uh, wine, 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 and still stay stay miserable. Uh, Or you can do something about it. See, you will prep, pack, and ship. You will need to deal with admin issues. You will need a budget. You will need to file taxes and do bookkeeping. There's always pros and cons. What's worth it to you? Is your freedom worth it? Is your flexibility worth it? Is owning something that's your own and yourself, maybe it's your side money, maybe it's just something you want to do for you and has nothing to do with money. You can do this. You can do anything you want to but your reason has to be strong enough or you won't continue. You'll continue to make excuses instead of profits. So what's it gonna be? You can walk away, you can quit, throw in the towel, absolutely. No one's even gonna judge you for that. Maybe you'll judge yourself more. My question is, what are the results one way or the other? If you push through the hard things and you get past it and you learn to deal with the problems and you learn to um, do better research and make better bundles and make better buying decisions and keep moving forward, what are the potential results of that? And if you decide to walk away, what's at stake? You're going to spend other time because your why didn't necessarily disappear. The avenue by which you're taking to get to your why could change but your reason has to be strong. Otherwise, you're just gonna throw in the towel. There are days we're gonna be CEOs, there are days we're gonna be the janitors, and there are days we're gonna be both. And that's just part of it, but you're not alone. Sometimes you feel like that because maybe people around you aren't supporting you or they go, oh my gosh, you're crazy. How many times have you heard that? Have you said your dreams out loud or tell people you're doing something new and they're like, oh, she's crazy, he's crazy. What is he doing now, you know? Are you doing that? Is your why worth it? Is it so worth it that you're going to stick it out and see the results? So whether it's this avenue or another avenue, analyze the reasons why you want to walk away or where you could walk away and decide if you're working within one of these. 
If it's another reason altogether, great. Let's talk about it. But don't quit for one of these reasons. Don't quit because you gave it gave in when it was hard. Because the next thing you do is going to be hard too. Choose your hard. Living with regret is hard. Or taking actions that are unknown and scary and fearful, yet bring results that you want, is hard too. So choose the path that you want. You guys, there's still a couple spots left for the workshop for January. I would love to meet you there. I'm really excited about it. people are counting down to Christmas. I'm like, I'm counting down to workshop time because I just, it's one of my favorite things. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. There's a few seats left um, in for January in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're going to get together. We're going to build bundles. We're going to walk through the trade show. You are going to walk away with so much. I just can't wait to meet you there. So if you're on the edge of quitting, I feel you. I've been there. I am there sometimes every week thinking about that because this stuff is really hard, but you're not alone. You can do this one small step. And remember, even if you have to write it on a sticky note and put it in front of your face, put it as a screensaver on your phone, on your computer, what is your reason? What is your why? Because that is what's going to keep you going during the hard times. My reason is that I like the freedom and flexibility of being my own boss. I don't know. I don't, I don't love being told what to do. I got good ideas that I want to explore and I don't like to be put in a box or held back. I'm willing to fail to try, but to have someone tell me it's a bad idea or I have to do this or I have to be here at this time and do that and then tell me what I can and cannot earn. I just don't like that. That's my why. So I keep going because I don't want to work at Starbucks. <laughs> I keep going because as I've built this, as I've gone through those 80 hour weeks sometimes where I was like hustling during the day and hustling at night and doing everything I could, it's worth it now because my results now are not are not from what I did yesterday. The results I'm getting now are cumulative efforts over time and consistency. That's what results come from. It's not just something you did yesterday or overnight. It's a cumulative effort. So guys, I know you could be any other place listening to any other thing right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. If you have not let yet left a review, please leave a review, even if it's just a little stars and I like it, it's great, or, you know, maybe it's a bad review you want to leave, whatever it is, your honest opinion. I really appreciate that. It really helps to be ranked in, in Google and in Spotify and in, in Apple and everything else. So please leave a review if you like the Amazon Files podcast. And if you have a uh, guest that you might think would be a good guest for the show, um, please email me, reach out to me, and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.